Hey everyone, my last video I said I'd keep you guys up to date with uh, me trying to get better at doing battle song flips and uh, thought I'd do that real quick before I get into the machining. This is the trainer I showed in the video. Um, I got it just because it was like 20 bucks on Amazon and it was really fast to get. It's pretty crappy, pretty heavy, the pins are wearing out, it's like cast iron or something. So don't recommend this. This is a lot better. Uh, this was like $40, this is the one I said I ordered. Um, would recommend that. My favorite though is definitely this Squid Industries. They're frequently sold out on the website and uh, so I finally was able to get one. I was reminded because Squid Industries Co. left a really nice comment on my Instagram and so uh, I saw that this was available and I snagged it up and it's definitely uh, really great quality and uh, for the money it's definitely worth it. Um, and uh, been able to learn some other tricks like I can spin around my thumb sort of successfully um, and then I can kind of started almost learning this uh, I forget what it's called the ice man move ice pick move uh, so still working on that um, but I'm having fun and I definitely would recommend this all right let's get into machining in my last video, I added a concave shape to the handles so your fingers would naturally fall in the right position. I thought I would add a similar feature to the spacers. I feel comfortable enough with stainless now that I skip making mild steel parts altogether on this one. To add this convex curve, I use a lollipop end mill. That's why there's these grooves in the fixture. Maybe I should have just cut a step down. I deburr one side in the machine. Maybe in the future I should look into using a dovetail bit or something so I can do both sides. I like this look. Some bell songs have jimping on the spacers. I think it's probably just aesthetic. You don't really get any grip when using the knife to cut or anything. I thought these grooves though could possibly be good for twirling it around though. There are some really tiny flats at the top and bottom so that the curve doesn't make a super sharp edge. Part of the problem with using this kind of tool though is that now being slightly off in the Z up and down matters and it looks like I'm slightly off. I checked the height of the tool with a gauge block. It seems like I'm off by maybe a thou. I'm going to adjust things so that the flats are even smaller and the curve is more pronounced. I think that'll look better and make any error harder to see, even though it's already quite hard to see. I didn't like how the adaptive tool path came from the back side of the part. I put the parts tip to tip like this so that there'd be less slotting, so to speak. I put a couple starting points and it seems to have fixed it. Now there's room for the chips to escape and less time cutting air. This looks better. It's a very subtle difference, but I think it was worth it. Let's talk about design. I just thought I would try this lollipop end mill idea for fun, but maybe there's a little more to it than that. I always thought it was interesting how brands carry themes through their product line. If you buy power tools, you at least know that there's all these brand color schemes. I think about it whenever I see knives being sold. I can't really tell which of these knives are made by Benchmade and which are made by Kershaw, but I can definitely tell which is made by Spyderco. Spyderco created a style. They have this distinctive finger hole, 
They have a simple knife curve edge. They tend to have a full flat angle grind. And of course, you know, the cool little spider logo. It's not that there's anything wrong with Benchmade or Kershaw. Maybe they are more popular because they aren't weirder looking and people don't want something weirder looking like a spider coat. But they were able to come up with an aesthetic that they can apply to lots of different knives and make them recognizable to even people who aren't huge knife collectors. And I just think that's super cool. So I wasn't really trying to, but maybe I'm starting to find my own style a little. And maybe the concave shapes will be part of that. Or maybe the textures will be part of that. Maybe just the crazy mechanisms I want to design is enough. Hopefully I'm not the only one who finds this kind of thing interesting. Let's move on to the buttons. I made a fixture and a couple steel buttons, but I accidentally didn't record all of the footage. Here's the buttons. I thought for sure I'd just go with the circle pattern I created, but it doesn't look as good as I hoped. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do some experimenting with patterns again. Poor me. I decided to try using a full roundover tool, specifically this one from Grimsmo. Only problem is that it's made for 8th inch parts, and I made my buttons 25 thou smaller than that. I wanted to make my scissors thinner, and I wanted to be able to use thinner stock, but be able to machine every side. But I saw what it would look like in Fusion, and I kind of liked the look of it. However, in person, I feel like the slight undercurve is just too subtle. I might just have to use a regular roundover bit, or maybe change the thickness of things. But then I thought about my handles and spacers. Maybe I could do a matching but mirrored effect of a slightly convex curve on the side of the buttons. Then I accidentally broke a screw off in the fixture. And I failed to drill it out. So let's just start again. I made this fixture and I added a step, unlike my last button fixture, so that the roundover tool could have room. I face both sides of the part to thickness. Then after drilling some holes, unlike the handles, I do the surfacing right away. I make some slight adjustments to the circle pattern, and I create a parallel tool path to try a more knurled pattern. After adding a counter bore, I can position the part with the dowels on the fixture. Now I just have to not over tighten any screws. Looking up torque online gave me unsatisfying answers. Machinery's handbook says that torque wrenches aren't totally accurate because proper torque depends on the coefficient of friction of the materials and what oil, if any, is lubricating the threads. So I just decided to do a test myself. I measured how much force it would take to break a screw using the fixture I messed up. 25 inch pounds. 15 inch pounds seemed like a good number to play it safe. I removed the dowels and started hogging away the extra material with a quarter inch end mill. and I finish up with the full roundover tool. The circle pattern is cool, but still not perfect. I think I'll need to draw the circles myself to make it how I want or something. The circles just don't quite look like circles. Or maybe a smaller tool would help? and you can see where the tool starts and stops. I changed the divot from being just a simple circle in the center of the button to a complex surface that I thought would better match the handles. I'm on the fence if I should keep it that way. Here's the knurled square pattern. I think I like it more than the circles, but maybe it'd look better as diamonds?
Okay, actually, the diamonds and squares are tied for what I like more. For the other button, I tried for a guilloche look again. Once again, having to deal with fusion lagging with circles. Strangely, creating multiple arcs is easier for fusion than circles. The arcs create diamond patterns that change in size. It's kind of cool, but I don't know if a non-symmetrical design is right for the button. My favorites last time were the triangular pyramids and the hexagons, so I don't know why I haven't tried that yet. The triangle pyramids are alright, but they lack some definition. I should have made them bigger. I think I also don't like how there is more of a sharp corner in the way I'm using the round over. I think I'll try using a slight chamfer on the edge and see what happens. The hexagon I thought was alright, but then I put it up against the handles and noticed how the hexes are oriented 90 degrees off. I think you can also tell I didn't engrave them to the same depth. And then I saw how the hexes don't really match up with the holes. So clearly this is a disaster and I should try it again. Well, I don't think my chamfer idea really worked, but the patterns look better. Just like the handles, I probably should have started by making a perfectly smooth one. I also want to try a pattern I couldn't figure out how to make work on the handles. The radial toolpath is pretty cool. I don't think it would work out with the handles, but maybe I just need to use a smaller tool. But I think this toolpath is perfect for this part. I kind of messed up here. I thought I'd try getting rid of the facing operation on this side. Now that I know it's uh, the correct thickness, why do I need it? I just, I'm gonna surface it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the problem is that I put the drills after the surfacing, so now the center drill doesn't even touch the part. So the drill drilled off center. Oops. But I was able to still put it on the fixture. Here's my craziest idea yet. I use a 16th inch round over tool on the already rounded over part, but I come in at a slightly different angle. Okay, it's stupid, but it works, so that's not stupid, right? I mean, I like how it looks. You can see a slight edge, but it's more noticeable on the video, and I think tumbling would hide that. But I probably should just make the part slightly thicker or get rid of the bottom section of the curve. I think this radial one looks pretty great. It doesn't have quite the complexity of a real geyoshe pattern, but I still think it kind of has that look. It reminds me of a roulette wheel. And here's the smooth one. 
Because of my error with the face mill, this one got a bit of a step from the roundover bit. Kind of scotch brighted it a little, but I think I got the gist of how it looks, and I decided I'm just going to make some more of the stainless matching buttons using the roulette pattern. Here's the stainless. I decided to very slightly increase the number of lines in the pattern. I do the second round over step again, but this time I inch it slowly in to where it looks just right. Here they are right off the machine. I think they look pretty good. I think the round over looks good. Maybe it'll change in the future to something less weird, but for now I felt like I probably should just move on. I don't know if they match up with the hex pattern, but I like mixing things up for the prototype so you can see the different techniques I'm trying. Okay, in my next video I'll get to some serious stuff with the mechanism. I need to make some real steel blades and make some steel pins and actually make them so that the button can click up and down hopefully. So until next time, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Later.